Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, friends. Welcome to another episode of the Marketing Your Practice podcast. Today, in this episode, I'm talking with the amazing Dave Tuhill. Now, we're talking all about Facebook ads, but in particular, how do we make our Facebook ads work? Let me start with this. You absolutely should, as a part of your community outreach, be running Facebook ads. There's a way that you can do it that is cool and helpful, that is totally heart-centered. Now, the one bit of feedback that I get most when I'm talking to you guys all about Facebook ads is this. It's relatively easy to get leads, people to raise their hand and say, hey, listen, I, I want to come in for an appointment. The tricky thing is getting them to turn up. We end up with lots of what's often referred to as kind of tire kickers. Now, there's a very simple reason why that happens. Now, first of all, we have to look at the patients that are coming in via Facebook or Instagram or any kind of digital marketing very differently from the patients that are internal referrals to our practice. So that's the first key part. Then the second thing is we've got to identify what is the missing piece. That's where Dave goes into great detail. I'll give you a hint. The missing piece is trust. We haven't built up that trust. Dave talks through a two-step process of you making really simple videos that'll help you build that trust. It'll mean way more people end up turning up at your practice, means you'll have more impact, more reach, more profitability, all those kind of things. Now, making these videos is really simple. We talk about the technology stacks and the really simple way. It's nothing overwhelming about this. You could get started on this immediately and you really should. If you don't know Dave too, Dave is a chiropractor. He's not practicing as a chiropractor anymore. He's one of the most respected marketers in the space, the health and wellness space. He's spending literally millions of dollars each and every year on digital marketing. He works with some of the biggest brands in the world. Basically, he's a whiz when it comes to this stuff and we really love what he has to say. That's enough talking for me. Let's jump in and listen to the brilliance of Dr. Dave Tuhill. See you in there. Welcome to the Marketing Your Practice podcast, where we guide natural health and wellness experts through the pitfalls of marketing. Each episode, you'll learn simple, effective, easily actionable, and heart-centered marketing strategies. And here's your host, Angus Pike. Dave, welcome to the Marketing Your Practice podcast. How are you, buddy? Doing great, man. Doing great. How are you? I'm, I'm doing amazingly well. I've been very excited about this. I'm thankful. Let me just give a shout out to our friend, Tony Ebel, for helping to hook this up. I've been following you now for the last 24 months or so, uh, watching your Instagram and listening to your podcast. Um, so Dan Sullivan, who you do a lot of work with, has been on the podcast beforehand. He raves about you as well. So I'm very excited and very grateful to have you on the show. For our um, listeners that might not know a little bit of your background, which is a, a great story, can you just spend a couple of moments uh, giving them a journey to kind of where you are now and what you do? And then we're going to talk all about kind of making the most of our Facebook ads. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. And, um, you know, actually, Dan just walked out of the studio and he shot some, some, some content right before I jumped on here. So, um, but yeah, it's, the journey, my journey has been, been interesting. I, um, you know, growing up, I always, I, I loved uh, put, putting things together and taking them apart from Legos to, you know, in, in grad school, I, I did, I built, mo took, you know, built motorcycles and took them apart and put them back together. Um, and so I knew I liked to do that. And, you know, my path led me into chiropractic and I went to chiropractic school. Um, and while I was in chiropractic school, I really um, started to fall in love with the digital marketing side. I would do, I was doing some, you know, dabbling in some digital marketing for, a fr um, my brother-in-law's practice at the time. I was running some Facebook ads. I was doing um, live I was doing some live events uh, promotion, and so I really started to fall in love into that kind of that side of you know changing the world, right? It's you know you have the people that are, are laying hands and are, are, are uh, giving treatments, and then the the other people like drive you know drive the uh, the people to them. And so I um, I finished out school. And started working with, um, well, towards the end of uh, school, I started working with Dan Sullivan and working on some programs with him and, and building um, some awesome, awesome posters um, and things like that. And really, I found that um, I had a skill set for looking at, you know, the full, you know, uh, array of everything that was going on and being able to put things together and piece things, piece things together in a very effective way. Um, and so I, I practiced um, for two years. Um, really got a lot of experience in practice and what was kind of cool about, you know, you know, being in school, but then being a doctor out of practice is when a patient would come in, I ran the ad, right? Mm -hmm. I made the system for them to get called and I, and I, you know, made sure that they got nurtured and saw testimonials to get into my day one visit. And then I would learn how they got in. Right. And I started to understand kind of what were the, these different, we talk about funnels and we talk about, you know, ad funnels or social media funnels. 
I started to learn kind of where people were at. And I realized, and what we'll talk a little bit, a little bit about today was that, you know, a Facebook ad uh, lead or a Google lead is different than a referral lead, right? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, it was just that we need, meant that we needed to approach things differently. And so I really started to study that. Um, and after about two years, I um, moved out of practice and started working with Dr. Josh Axe. Um, started um, running, you know, helping them with their marketing at Ancient Nutrition, built a couple of programs with them. Um, and then fast forward to today, um, I work uh, directly with Josh as uh, his senior advisor at Ancient Nutrition for marketing. Um, and so I really help with designing the marketing strategy for Ancient Nutrition um, and DrAxe.com. Um, I have a mastermind group with Dan, Dan Sullivan and Josh, as you mentioned. Um, and then I'm actually on the wellness advisory board at Emerson Ecologics, uh, which is a awesome um, resource for doctors that want to get patient supplements um, through, um, through online. Um, and so, yeah, so that's kind of like the, the journey that it took me on. And um, I have a great passion for chiropractic and natural medicine. Um, mm -hmm. And I just, you know, I, I, my position in, on, in the game of you know, changing the world through, through natural health is being the strategist behind, um, behind the businesses that are, that are doing it. Yeah, I know, particularly over in the States, I mean, around the world, Josh has had spectacular success as well. Um, can you tell a, a little of our audience, what is it that Josh does? And a little bit of Josh's quick background story too, of which, you, you know, certainly listening to Josh's testimonials about you, he's happy to say that you have been instrumental in that success um, as well. As my wife, Lauren, just this week was telling me, I just listened to this amazing interview with this guy, Josh Axe. And it was this week I went, well, I'm about to be chatting with the guy that's kind of helped Josh do what he's done. So uh, can just touch a couple of moments on, on Josh's background. Yeah. And I appreciate that. That's, that's um, yeah. I mean, I, I'm grateful to have a very, very, very small part in the part to play. I give a lot of the credit to, or really all the credit to our amazing team at ancient nutrition. Um, Josh was in practice about 10 years ago. He had a thriving chiropractic and functional medicine practice and would do, or I would say clinical nutrition practice mm -hmm. um, and really learned, um, you know, learned how to market, learned how to um, reach, you know, reach his target consumer through his practice. Um, and at the end of the day, he just wanted to reach more people. And so he started a radio show, um, wanted to reach more people. So he started DrAxe.com, which is a um, natural health website with articles on nutrition and health um, and that started that, that that continued to grow and then over time that actually merged into ancient nutrition where he partnered with um, the co-founder of garden of life Jordan Rubin um, and together they've created ancient nutrition and um, you know one thing about Josh and the ancient nutrition team but specifically about Josh is you know he he really likes to um, he doesn't just make decisions by you know, uh, based on um, emotion or based on, oh, I, this is a cool idea or this is something that's going on. He's really someone that has a great mind um, and a lot of, I, I would just call it wisdom. And wisdom, when I say wisdom, I, I mean, you know, being able to look at trends and things that are going on and being able to look um, kind of forward and ahead and seeing what um, people are going to be looking to consume. And I mean, that's really where the, 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 cornerstone product um, for ancient nutrition that, that really launched it was bone broth protein. And again, mm -hmm. he was looking for ways to get more, you know, his patients were all on bone broth protein and he was looking for ways for more people to consume bone broth protein. Um, and specifically um, with him, it was with his mom. His mom had um, cancer mm -hmm. and he was working directly with her and went, and went on that journey of helping um, his mom overcome cancer um, using these ancient Chinese medicine um, supplements herbs and then mindset and lifestyle um, really worked with her on that. And that's what's really fueled um, ancient nutrition and taking off and be one of the largest natural health brands and DrAx.com being one of the largest websites. Um, and then also there's just the team. I mean, one thing that Josh is, um, you know, incredible at, he's an incredible leader and he's, you know, with the team, I'll, t I'll share kind of a personal story um, and then we can, we can keep, keep moving forward. But we were, we were playing golf about uh, I want to say six, six months ago or so. And, mm. you know, I'm, I'm very involved in the day-to-day -day decision making and, you know, big decisions that we're making on a, on a, on a regular basis. And I said, Josh, are you aware that of all the major decisions that are happening while you're just teeing off, the, you know, the, th the third hole that, that are happening in the company that you're not aware of? And he said, that's why, you know, that's why I brought on leaders and I focus on leadership because leadership multiplies management is a big thing. Leadership multiplies management's adds and subtracts. 
right? So when you can create strong leaders yeah. and invest in the leadership of your team, they're making decisions as if you were there and you were part of that conversation. So um, that's just really the, I, I mean, those are the things that I really see you know, that drove Inch Nutrition forward is, you know, Josh was able to build this, you know, leaders as, and Jordan as well is, you know, focusing on leadership. Um, and then the second thing, like I mentioned earlier, is just being strategic, not just trying to make, you know, quick moves just because it's a good mm -hmm. idea, but really thinking about what, you know, the data that's behind it, but then, you know, following your gut and what you've seen the work in the past and kind of working those all together. So that's a little bit of a background on ancient nutrition and, and Josh and what his journey was there. And, um, and yeah, I, I've just been, I've been honored to uh, play a small part from the marketing, uh, as a marketing strategist, um, and as an, an advisor to Josh, uh, during the journey. So. Yeah. Humble story, Dave. Thank you so much for sharing. One of the things I want to chat about today is, you know, one of your areas of expertise is obviously, and you talked about right from the beginning is taking people from the social media platforms or even the search platforms and then uh, turning those into patients. One of the challenges mm -hmm. that I hear from the audience, uh, my coaching clients from the profession at large is that they might run a Facebook ad, for instance, and get 20 or 30 leads, but none of them turn up or it's so difficult for them to turn up or the quality of those patients is terrible. Inevitably, what we end up doing is blaming the ad didn't work or the ad team uh, terrible. All of these excuses other than taking maybe any responsibility on ourselves. Today, you're going to share with us the process of how we can take more of those people from the social media platforms and actually have them in our practice and how do we end up turning them into kind of great patients? So um, I'm excited to kind of hear more about yeah. that. Yeah, and if you don't mind, I, might, uh, I may do a little bit of a whiteboard, um, you know, uh, little session there as, as I talk about this. But it's a great question. And I, I think, you know, it's the ultimate question, especially when it comes to marketing, because mm -hmm. for so many of us, we're, you know, our goal is to kind of scale our marketing, right? We're looking to hire on an ads team. Mm. and get them to send people into our system, right? And we convert, you know, your, your office convert maybe at 50 or 75% and they come into your system and, and, and they convert um, and they yes. come in onto care. And, and what we've been used to for a while and a lot of us are used to is more of a referral based system or a system that's driven by maybe screenings, health screenings, where you're seeing the person ahead of time. You're able to build that rapport ahead of time yeah. um, or a friend heard from a friend and they had results. And so they're going to invite someone they come in or they invite them to a dinner talk or something that allows them to have a personal experience with you. Mm. What happens though on Facebook is when we run a Facebook ad, you're, you're really meeting the person that's, you know, sitting on their couch watching, you know, some Netflix and they're scrolling on their phone and they see something that catches their eye, right? That's a, that's, that's a Facebook lead that you would get there um, that you know, kind of just you caught their eye, and if you resound with them, right? If the ad resounds with them, they're going to make a decision to interact with it, right? They'll schedule an appointment, schedule a consult call, whatever your offer is. Um, but what happens is that part, right? After they schedule, there's a gap. There's a there's some time. So I'm going to write this. I'm, we'll we'll kind of go to the whiteboard here. There's there's the lead, right? The person that's filled out information for a visit in your practice and they've already done the work, right? They've seen the ad, it's resonated with them. I think I need this. And they've kind of put the ball back in your court. Mm. And what we expect is right away that they're gonna show up. But you gotta understand that this is a different lead than you're gonna get from a referral or someone else, you know, someone that was sent over to your practice. When we look at an ads funnel, right? At the bottom of the funnel, what comes out, this is everybody in the world, right? Yes. This is everybody in the world. At the bottom of the funnel, if you do this correctly and you nurture correctly, the bottom of the, these are the people that are ready to buy. They, that's, your, that's your referral lead. That's someone that's heard about you. That's someone that knows that you're going to get the, res, the solution for them. They're ready to come in. It's like when you go to the store and you're planning on buying a car and you know what car you want, you know they have it. You're, it's just an exchange of money. This is where you're going to see a lot of these referral leads. A lot of the Facebook leads are in this spot, mm -hmm. right? And what this area is, especially if they've clicked and they've, you know, they've interacted with your ad, they, the, the one thing that they don't have in you is trust, right? You can build awareness. You can build some, you know, some, mm -hmm. a little bit of trust, especially if you're, you're doing drip campaigns with your ad, you're showing them testimonials as they're, you know, when they're, when they're signing up. But the big thing what we need to create in them for a lead that's, you know, it's a lead. Again, I want to make sure everybody's, you know, with me. It's a lead that's clicked on your ad 
they've signed up and there's the, and this is this time now it's the time between them signing up and showing up for their visit right and and we're and we're having a struggle with getting them to actually show up the biggest thing that we need to focus on during that time is trust yes is this going to be the best use of my time on this day especially if hey if you're in a pediatric practice and we talked about tony evil love yes. you man um you know think about a mom right and, the, and we'll start with this one as an example because I, I don't like to look at these funnels i like to look at it with them like with with a strategic mind versus oh let's just oh let's just call them right or let's just you know how what's a simple way to build trust but think about a mom who saw an ad for their child maybe a sensory deficit child and they're thinking about coming into the, you know they sign up for an appointment in the practice as that day grows near what's the, what's creeping into their head you know i know what it feels like when i bring my son into a pra practice environment like this it can be crazy like he can throw a tantrum he can go off or um, I'm, I'm concerned that, hey, I've been to 15 other doctors for, to help my son and they haven't gotten any, you know, he, they haven't gotten any results. Um, yes. That's all creeping into their head from the point that they scheduled that appointment through the ad to when their actual show date is. And so what I like to do is I like to give them, um, I like to build trust in a very strategic, scalable way mm. during that process. And I believe that if you can do these two things or add these two parts to this little space, right? We work on our day ones, day twos, or conversion. We train on all that. This is something we want to really work on, especially if you're dealing with this, with this challenge. So the biggest thing that you can do, the two things that I've seen work the best, and it's, they're both communication pieces, is number one, right when they schedule, you want to have your front desk manager take a video, right, with their iPhone, and it can be a generic video. It doesn't need to be for this specific person. So it can go out. Whenever someone schedules, this fires off. This, they either get it through a text or an email, preferably text. Mm -hmm. It's a video from your front desk saying, hey, Dave, it's Maria. I am so excited that you're going to be coming into our practice today. I want to let you know exactly where we're, or sorry, that you scheduled a point with our practice. I'm going to let you know where exactly where we're located. Maybe she's standing right outside, your, right, right outside of your business. She's showing you the sign. We're right in this shopping center. That's mm -hmm. 65 right there. I just want to let you know that you're in the right place and we cannot wait to see you. Keep in touch or, or keep an eye out because um, Dr. Um, uh, Angus is going to be doing a, um, is be sending you a video here, here shortly in the next couple of days in, pre in preparation for your appointment. We'll see you soon, right? Instantly, you've taken that excitement that they created with, you know, the, the, the little bit of excitement that happened when they made the, that appointment and said, hey, maybe there's a little bit of hope and you're adding more hope to the fire, right? Mm -hmm. You're saying, wow, these people... When was the last time a doctor has followed up with you after making an appointment with a, with a video to your phone? Like, mm. well, that's incredible, right? So that's, that's the first one. That's to get them to understand that this is, you know, this place, is, it's a safe place. They're going to communicate. We're in, a, a big thing you could say is you're in the right place. Thank you so much. It, mm -hmm. it takes it from a online, you know, keyboard interaction to a very, you know, visceral, they can see you interaction. Right? Yes. So that's number one. Number two is you want to have your doctor or, who, or whoever is going to be their treating physician in the practice, and you want to make another video. And this is an important one. And this is something that we talk about, Josh, Dr. Josh, Dan Sullivan, myself talk about all the time um, in, in kind of our teachings with our masterminds, is to understand that you have to tell your story. Yep. Your story is what connects you with them. When have you, you know, when you're at a screening and someone says, my son has had this, this, and this, more than likely, hey, if you have a PEDS office, you have a story about PEDS, you're sharing that story with them, right? When you're meeting someone for the first time in, their, in, the, in your day one, you're sharing your story with them. It's so important with a Facebook lead to build that connection through story. And so telling your story, and this is how I would tell your story, it's very simple. Number one, you want to share the problem that, that, that you know, share the problem that you had, right? Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, it could be, um, hey, Maria, this is uh, Dr. Dave, and I just, I'm so excited for your visit tomorrow. And again, this is iPhone video. This is not professionally done. Yeah. You want to do it as, as kind of organic as possible. Yes. Um, we're so excited that you're you know, you'll be coming, you know, you're doing that video. I'm so excited to be coming to our practice today. I just want to let you know that I was right where you were, my, or my wife and I were right where you were 15 years ago, where we had tried every single thing to help with my son. He had, then, so then you want to go into the problem. So it's the intro, you go into the problem or the challenge that mm -hmm. you guys were dealing with, right? You then you go into and then you go into the, what we call the psychological challenge, which is it shouldn't be this hard 
for my son to be healthy, yep. right? And the other challenge is I feel like it's my fault, right? With parents, they feel like it's their fault. They feel like they can't get yeah. that result for them, right? You're, 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 you're meeting them there and, you're, and, you, and then the next thing you're going to do, you're going to empathize with them. I was right where you were. I was a doctor and I didn't know how to take care of my own child and I went to the ends of the earth to find the solution, right? The next thing you're going to bring on is the, the authority. I have worked with thousands of children, right, to get, you know, to help them with blank, 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 right, whatever you're thinking. And this could be for adults. So you could, this is interchangeable. Mm. And, um, and you want to give them hope. Or, I'm sorry. And then you want to give them the plan. I've helped thousands of children doing this, this, and this. I'll say how I would explain it in sensory because I've gotten to know um, the, the pediatric kind of ads area uh, arena a little bit. Like yes. in sensory, you would say something along the lines of, you know, your child, what we found out was that my daughter's brain was on, this may sound familiar to you, was running at a million miles an hour. It was like pouring rocket fuel on her brain. It was, we were trying to work on, you know, we were hiring therapists and speech therapists and this person and this person and taking this drug to try to get that, her brain to kind of slow down and for her to actually be a normal functioning human being, what we realized was the solution was taking care of her brain and nervous system and lowering that, you know, stress so that she could actually learn and receive the, you know, the input that we were giving her. Um, and once we did this, it changed her life, right? And it changed our lives. And so again, that first video is all front desk and office manager giving that kind of welcome and letting them know exactly where they are. You want, to, you want them to circle that on that calendar. That's the goal of that first one. Get them to circle it on their calendar. The second one is sharing that story and empathizing with them, letting, letting them know, I'm not just some Joe Blow that um, is looking to get, take money from you. I have a story just like yours. I went to the end of the earth to get a solution. We can't wait to see you come into the practice. I can't wait to see you on you know, this week or tomorrow. You can set that up to, to go out the night before their appointment. And so it's, again, you want them to circle it on their calendar. What I found is if you can do those two things, you can bridge this gap from a lead to show pretty fast, right? Because just think about the experience prior to that. They're either, maybe they're getting a quick call from you or they're, not get, they're getting nothing. Maybe it's just an email saying, here's when your appointment is mm -hmm. versus you going out of your way. And you can scale this. So it doesn't need to be something that's sent out uniquely to every single person. You can have it automatically fire off um, for every new lead that comes in. Got it. So that were my two questions there too. Can you tell me, let's suppose that I actually wanted to do it for every person that came in, you know, I, I had the time and space to be able to kind of pull that off and I was going to go that kind of really high touch. The mechanics behind how I would obviously shoot a video just on my phone, the mechanics of getting that to the person, are you putting that video up on YouTube, are you hosting it somewhere? What's the easiest way to get a message from my phone, the video, to your phone for you to watch? Yeah, so again, if you want it to be automated in a funnel, so it's like a lead comes in, number one is you could talk, if you have an ads team, talk to your ads team and say, hey, I want this to be part of their experience before they come into the practice. A great program that I, I always recommend is SCED, S-K-E-D. Um, SCED um, was created by a chiropractor that was originally an engineer. He became a chiropractor and he realized we need to do a better job of communicating with our potential leads. And then he also has some great ways to integrate things like this for existing patients, right? Regular text messages, little touch points that can lead to higher retention, right, down the road when they're getting things that are automated. It's like, you know, with Ancient Nutrition, when we send out emails, we're scheduling all of those emails to go out, knowing that that's going to help to drive sales and build retention. So SCED is probably the program I would recommend. Um, but there's other programs that you can use for that. Um, Active Campaign is a great, you know, great program. You can connect that with Zapier. Um, and for those that, for those of you that are chiropractors on here, that probably is foreign uh, gibberish. Um, but you want to have, it's, this is a very pretty, a pretty simple, um, it's pretty simple. And so, you know, fi finding a, you know, a digital marketer that can do that for you. Um, but usually if, if you have an ads team, usually this is something that they could, they can incorporate pretty easily. Yeah. I've been over this last six months, really loving Loom. Um, yeah, which is L O O M. So for those of you that perhaps were doing a little bit of this yourself, Loom is an app that either goes on your computer or on your phone there as well, it allows you to shoot a video and it immediately kind of gives you a link. You don't need to upload the video anywhere. Um, and then you could just put that link in a text message, have your front desk, send it to them. That would be a yeah. really kind of easy old school kind of way for you to be able to get a video to them. If you were kind of running this yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's a great point. 
that's the MV. Hey, if you don't have any, this, any of this going on, MVP is create a loom video for each new lead that comes in. Right. Yes. Um, what I was kind of give, going through is more of a scaled version, but oh, I agree. Yeah. Do that first. The scaled version is the same. Everybody gets the same videos, right? So you're yeah. not making these videos more than once you yes. create the video once and then it gets automatically fired off. So like when a lead is created, it automatically fires off this video. And then when the appointment, you know, and then on the appointment date, you can do this, you know, Eventbrite allows you to do this. Um, Calendly allows you to do this. And I'm sure you're, you know, your CRM, a lot of you have uh, the different CRMs that will probably, once you create an appointment, you can send out an automatic text. And so you can just plug that text in to go out right before a, a patient's first appointment. Yeah. Dave, going right back to the beginning of the process, we've run an ad. From that ad there, are you suggesting that we, they are able to make an appointment straight from that ad? Are we getting name, phone number, email? What information are we getting? What's that early stage there from you know, them clicking on the ad to making an appointment? So yeah, so with ads, there's a couple of things. And again, these, are, these have really changed and evolved over the last year. Um, so things that you need to be aware of, we, you know, we were able to be a lot more targeted in the past than we are now. Um, mm -hmm. It's just the rules of, of the game have changed a little bit. And so you don't want to try to be too, too hyper targeted with your ad. Just make it just to make a point of that. Um, especially can if you're you doing kind of natural that? health. Can you expand that a little bit? What, what do you mean by hyper targeted? Um, can you, expand? yeah, so you're selecting. So oftentimes we'll select audiences cause you know, and it really depends the area that you're into, right? If you're in the middle of a city, um, you might have access to a lot more leads than, you know, if you're, if you're in a, in a smaller town, but especially if you're in a smaller town, I think sometimes we're, we try to just narrow down our audience to a very specific group. Um, and what happens is, is there's not enough for Facebook to actually, not enough for people, Facebook to actually reach out to. Right. And mm -hmm. so, you know, there, for a while there was the strategy of, we're just going to hyper, hyper, hyper target and try to get these very specific people because you think that, well, the quality, and this is a big thing. Well, if I make it more targeted, I'll get higher quality leads. That's not the truth. You need, you, the focus is, and a lot of people aren't doing this, is you need to focus on that process of after the, the lead comes in. But so that's what I would say. That, that's kind of my point on avoiding hyper-targeting and really focusing on, um, you know, more of a broader audience, but in your, gen, you know, in your area. Mm. And then, you know, number two, I would say like on ads, as you're creating them, Ads should not look like ads anymore. Yeah. There's just, there's so many ads out there. If you're creating an ad and it looks like an ad, you're not doing it right. You yeah. want to make an ad that, that is entertaining that someone's like, Ooh, I want to watch that. Right. They don't want to look at that video. Like, Oh, I want to go no, I want to know what's going on right there. Maybe it's, and I'm just throwing out some ideas, but maybe it's, you know, you're about to give it a cervical adjustment and then the camera pans up and says, Hey, it's Dr. Brian. I want to let you know about this, this, or, it shows an adjustment, they get up and they say, they sh and your patient shares, you know, what they've got, you know, the, the results they've gotten since being under care. But something that when you look at that video, you know, when you're, 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 you're scrolling through and you're like, oh my gosh, I have to see this. Like yeah. uh, a crocodile just ate a horse. I got to see how it did it. You know, I'm not saying you got to have, you know, have your, you know, your dog eat your cat. I'm just saying you want to create something that's entertaining for people while also educational. And so that's just another thing to think about when you're creating your ad videos, think outside the box, right? Don't just try to create, hey, here's an offer, $50. That's what everybody else is doing. You gotta think outside the box. Another great tip, uh, tip on that for creating ads, if you go to facebook.com backslash ads backslash library, you can search every, the ads from any business you want to. So you can see what ads any business is running mm -hmm. and you can see what their landing pages look like, right? Facebook.com backslash ads backslash library. You can see it. And so that's another kind of principle with running ads is we don't, I, I never create ads from scratch. Um, and I'm just like, Oh, here's a cool or fun idea. I'm looking on Facebook. And even if I have an idea, I'm looking and seeing are other people doing it? Cause if not, Hey, every once in a while we have a killer ad that's kind of way new, but most of like the ad ideas have been already used, right? Have already been or already created. We just want to use that and add our spin or our twist to it. So using that, like when you're thinking about creating ads um, and where you would take them to, and you were just asking about the offer, what kind of offer do you make? Is it uh, to a direct appointment? Is it paid? Is it not paid? You know, a, a good first step is to look at 
the other practices in your, in your area, right? In your region, you can search their practice name, right? Facebook.com backslash ads backslash library, and it'll show you all their ads that they're running mm -hmm. and all the landing pages that they're running as well. And so your, your ads team, if they're good, should be doing this. Um, and if you're doing it yourself, this is a great way to do some research to figure out, well, what am I, what, who am I competing against in this area? Cause say you're, you're like, it's a hundred dollars off or a hundred dollars upfront and you got to pay before the appointment. But then the guy down the street is doing $50 and you pay when you show up. Well, that's a lower barrier of entry. So you want to create, you, you know, you want to model what they're doing and then add, you know, the, your, your unique twist. Yeah. Terrific. So in, inside of that too, uh, to get onto some specifics, I've got a question for you. So somebody has uh, from the ad, maybe they've gone over to my website, they've raised their hand, they said that I've kind of interested in which case they've left a name and phone number. Um, it, the, in terms of the follow-up time from our CA beforehand, I, I'm imagining that's something that's best for us to do kind of as quickly as possible for us to get on the phone with them to try and actually schedule that appointment. Or if we have the ability to be able to do it, is it best for the person to be able to schedule that appointment themselves kind of immediately? Have you tested back before that between those two options? Yeah. I've, yeah. I mean, all, yeah, those are, those are two great questions. I think, you know, and you got me a great point earlier. I think let's talk about MVP first. So what's the, what's the, Hey, if you're just getting started, here's what I would do. If you have yes. an advanced team, here's what I would do. So if you're just getting started, you want to get on the phone with them as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. Right. Because the truth is, are you going to create the best ad that's going to get them to want to pay a hundred dollars for a visit right away. Like on your first run, probably not. So what I do is I do my best job on that sales page and I drive them all to a phone call, yes. right? Because that, that allows me to sell on the phone and that's something that you're more familiar with, right? You're able you do that in the practice all the time where someone comes in and you sell them, sell them for care. You're really just selling them for that first visit. But again, for a lot of us, it can be difficult to kind of hit the, um, the nail on the head with that sales page first. And so, yes, MVP, you want to create that sales page and get them on the phone. There's, there's some different apps you can use um, to, that will automatically call them right away. And then if they pick up, it'll say, we're connecting you with Dr. Brian's office. Then your phone rings and says, we got a lead from Facebook. I've seen that work. The problem is it's a little bit too complicated. And so what I would do is just have someone in your practice that is responsible for the leads and they're keeping an eye out on that, um, you know, that lead manager or that email that, that, that those leads come through, they're keeping an eye on that day and night, right? And when I say day and night, have a dedicated phone for them. It's, you're the lifeblood of the practice and they're the ones that are reaching out. They can text from that phone, they can call from that phone, but it's, that's MVP, right? That's minimum viable product, getting it off the ground, mm -hmm. run an ad and have the call to action to be a, a, a 15 minute phone assessment. So it's not like, 15 minutes to see if you're qualified for care or whatever. It's, you know, we're going to do an assessment. We're gonna, I, I'm leading you. And that's a big part of this process. When you're writing the ads, when you're writing the copy, you're leading them to an appointment. You're not giving them suggestions or ideas. You're leading them. You're guiding them to an appointment um, to schedule that appointment. So once you get that feedback though, and you've done those phone calls or you just got a rocking sales page that's doing really well, um, you can lead them to um, an appointment right? You can drive them to an appointment um, and like an online and just using an online scheduler and you can choose to charge beforehand or not. This is the thing. If your ad pay, if your sales page is the best, like is, is the bomb.com. Yeah. You can charge them ahead of time and brought, bring, you know, bring them through if you've effectively communicated with them. But the truth is for the most part, most of us don't do that. And so whether it's, Hey, you pay in person when you come in or, you create that, you know, that offer that's maybe a little bit lower price. So maybe it's $40 or $50. Um, and I'll answer another question um, on top of that, which is, you know, is 90, if I'm bringing on someone for a lead for $90, is that, you know, or, you know, and versus $40, you know, the $90 person is more, you know, committed, right? And they're going to buy care. Not necessarily. Um, I think that the reality is, is that you need to think, be thinking less, about that because your team, right? You've built a team and you're able to, you have convert, you're able to convert when people come into your practice. I would focus more on doing the best job of communicating with them well prior to coming in the office, right? Because if they have incredible pre-office experience yeah. and then you're like, Hey, it's gonna be $3,000. It doesn't matter whether they paid $40 or $90 for that first visit. You care about getting a qualified person to the practice. So that's just something I would say on, um, you know, on the pricing there, there too as well. 
Yeah. And I want to reinforce for our listeners that one of the biggest changes that we were able to make with our Facebook ads really was having a staff person, in this case, it was Carly, that we had her checking it kind of every hour during the day. So as soon as a new lead came in, at the most, mm. it was an hour before she was on the phone actually scheduling that so appointment. And that changed things uh, uh, you know, enormously. If we didn't kind of strike while the iron was hot, so to speak, it got more and more difficult for us to follow up with these people. And so I, I, I wanna just kind of circle back, because I think the very first thing that you said is what our listeners need to kind of get their head around. So for so many people, if, if you haven't advertised beforehand, we just expect that when somebody rings up and makes an appointment, they're going to turn up. I mean, that you, that's the kind of behavior yeah. that you would expect that would happen if we've had a referral practice. Um, that's, that's what happens. But when we move into this concept of, you know, you've introduced the idea of a lead, they need a little bit more loving beforehand. And I love the idea of those kind of two videos I can see how that would scale beautifully and be able to be kind of automated. But as you talked about, it, it's not that difficult for, and I almost think there'd be another wow level if my front desk CA uses your name in there as, as well. Same with me as the chiropractor. And particularly for those of you that are early in practice, man, if you don't have five minutes to be shooting these videos that could eventually turn into a long-term patient, I don't know what you're kind of doing with yourself there too. So Dave, any final things that you kind of want to, wrap up to kind of put all this in a basket, so to speak, to help people get kind of better success from their Facebook ads? Yeah. I mean, you know, one thing I, I'll, I'll close with this, I would say, you know, whenever I'm thinking about a problem or a challenge, Hey, leads aren't showing up or they're not converting for care because they're not quality or, um, you know, whatever your kind of challenges that, that arise, whether it's in the dry, you know, generating a lead, then lead to showing up or showing up to closing, um, what I do, it helps for me and it may help for you is i I have whiteboards all over my house and yeah. right. And I do this as a strategist. I'm whiteboarding all the time, but what a lot, what allows me to diagnose problems fast is I make sure that I have, I wireframe the sequence of events that go down and I make sure that staff are responsible for different areas of that sequence. So if, you know, step one is, you know, that first text, right. That they get after the lead, you know, after the lead shows up. And then they get, you know, they get this video call and then, you know, there's a, uh, they, when they show up, there's a tour, right? That was a big part of us getting people to convert. When they came in for the tour, we were having like an issue of them having a good experience between when they show up to when they start their, their, you know, their examination. And we were like, how can we improve conversions during this time? And what we did was we put testimonials on the wall with different topics, you know, based on different conditions. And we would look at their chief complaint that they did in their newspaper and paperwork. And as we were walking them back, we would go to the wall. We would go to a testimonial from their chief complaint and read it out to them. Right. And we let, and that led to a, tr a tremendous increase in actually just the conversions. Cause they're like, if that person can do it, I can do it too. Right. And so what, what, what I recommend you do is you wireframe out the entire process from the moment they become a lead to the moment that they sign up for care, Outline out every, every piece in between that process and start to measure, right? Start to measure. Okay, we're getting a lot of people to, okay, we fix, maybe you have that problem where they're not showing up and you fix that problem. You do those two things I mentioned, you fix that problem hmm. and then they show up and you're not getting them to show up for your day two or your, your review of findings, right? Okay, well then look at that visit and break it down. What do they do when they walk in the door? How do they leave? And start to diagnose those different pieces. Hey, if your your issue is with, um, you know, the review of findings and going through the financial and them actually converting under care, right? That could that, that could be. There's a lot of different areas where that you know that could fall off. It could be right at the beginning. You told them that it was going to be you know, your your communication at the beginning was poor, and so they didn't you know they didn't have the confidence in you. But I just encourage you if you're dealing with these with a, a challenge, number one. Look at it as an opportunity for you to grow. Um, and then also look at it, like write, write it down on a whiteboard or on a sheet of paper and look at where exactly is your problem. Because I think, again, I think oftentimes a lot of Facebook ads teams that are actually really good mm -hmm. have people that come and go because they don't have these different systems in place. And it's, I have bad leads. I mean, let me tell you this. Um, you'll probably agree with me. I mean, when I was in practice, I had a patient take out a second mortgage in her house because she knew that this, this is the thing that was going to help her. And again, our goal is not to get people to take out second mortgages in their house. Yeah. That's not the goal. Mm -hmm. But my point is, is that 
they, you know, they do their work, especially as a lead, they're doing the work to get them, um, you know, schedule the appointment. We need to take them and do the work to get them to come in, tell them the truth, and then um, ultimately get them, you know, get them the results that they deserve. Yeah. I, I, I think that's such a great point. And you articulate it so beautifully at the beginning here too, is that too often we're looking towards our marketing team, that whether it be on site or off site, for them to be able to do everything. And there often is just some pieces of the puzzle that are that are missing. I, I want to, mm. I really like that kind of minimal viable product. For many of you listening now, it, it is easy to go into overwhelm. Download Loom, L-O-O-M onto your phone. Um, or get it onto your desktop, laptop, computer there. It'll allow you to shoot a video really quickly. It'll give you a link. Start texting. Even, I would suggest this, I have lots of my coaching clients, Dave, doing this before all of their new patient visits, whether it be a referral or whatnot, is they send them a little video beforehand just saying, I'm really looking forward to meeting you on Thursday. It tells a little bit of the story that you talked about beforehand. It just means that when that person gets into the practice, they're so much more hungry. They're so much more excited. They've built trust there as well. I, thank you for being so incredibly generous. And if you're listening to this one today, gang, this might be one worth going back and actually watching the video as well. Dave has generously got his black, his whiteboard out there and drawn some nice kind of pictures for you to understand this as well. So right, yeah, here it is. But if people want to catch up with you after listening to the podcast, where's the best spot for them to go? Yeah, I mean, you can follow me on Instagram at drdavidm2hill. Um, I also have a website, meetwithdrdave.com. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm taking a little bit of a hiatus off of Instagram, but that's, uh, if you have any questions for me, you can shoot me a DM on there and I check that uh, from time to time, so. Yeah, I think there's even a number to text you somewhere on there as well that uh, if you've got. Yeah, that's, again, that's another, you know, trying to, trying to stay, up, stay uh, on top of these different funnels. You know, that, that was an interesting time where they had the text, you know, text me. Te and I, actually, I, I don't know if, it, if it's still up there. I, I, I probably will take it down because I think, you know, that was an early trend that worked for a short period of time, but then people realized it's not actually, you, you know, so. Yeah. Um, I think that, uh, it was good. And I, you know, the chat bots were good for a time. Um, they can be helpful in certain, in certain areas, but, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's not my actual number. Um, but you will be able to get a hold of me if you text that number. So, yeah. Hey buddy, thank you so much for all that you do. Thanks for taking the time to learn this stuff, to share it. You and I have uh, similar life visions in terms of helping practitioners reach more people. You know, I'm still in practice a little bit. You had your years in practice there as well. It's a great gift. There are many different ways that we can help change the world as, as well. On behalf of the Marketing Your Practice podcast, Dave, thanks for sharing with us today, buddy. And I look forward to hopefully seeing you one day in, uh, in person. Thanks, mate. Awesome. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast, you have to come and check out the Community Influencer Program. It's my monthly coaching program where we take all this material and I'll work one-on-one -on -one with you to apply, implement, systematize, and help guide you and your practice to the next level. Now, you can join me on over at adiomedia.com forward slash join. That's adiomedia.com forward slash join. I'd love to see you in there.